Greetings and welcome to my understanding plagiarism video. Now for those of you who have stumbled on this uh, video while you're on YouTube and looking for some information on plagiarism, please ignore the instructions I'm about to give. If you're in one of my classes, please do not ignore these instructions because I'm giving you an opportunity to earn extra credit. At the end of this, or rather starting at the middle and going to the end, there are eight examples and I, of which you are to choose whether something is properly paraphrased and cited, or if it's not. And what I want you to do is basically say number one through eight, say yes or no for each, give your answers, not the right answers, okay? I don't care what you get on this. This is mostly for my curiosity. And at the end of it, to get full credit, what you need to do is also write what about this was new and what you already knew. You don't have to explain things. Just tell me because I want to know if you've had this before and how useful this was. And then upload it in Blackboard in the appropriate spot and you will get some extra credit. And with that, those of you who just wandered in can come back. This has been adapted a couple of different times. So I'm giving credit to the site where I got it, who then gave credit to where they got it from basically using Dr. Seuss to look into what is plagiarism, what is cited, and also a little bit of APA citation. So moving right along, there we go. Well, what we missed there, let me go back a second. This is not adding up. These are all sorts of different types of plagiarism. I don't really care that you know each of these. If you're more curious about what each of these are, you can go to this website down here and it will tell you. Just realize that, that Plagiarism is a whole lot more than just copying something word for word or borrowing someone else's paper. What is plagiarism? It's basically stealing and lying. For those of you who follow the Ten Commandments, I think those are two of the ten. Please keep that in mind. Okay, you're stealing someone else's work, presenting it as your own, and then you're lying by saying that it is your work when it is not. Please, this, this is wrong on a lot of different levels. Now, plagiarism can be both deliberate and accidental. Deliberate is when you set out to plagiarize, and of course we know that that's wrong, but accidental plagiarizing can be just as bad. If you don't know when and how to cite, that's part of why I'm having you watch this. If you don't know how to paraphrase, I've got information in the course about paraphrasing or summarizing. This is your time to practice. If you're in my class, you've got literally two different drafts before your final draft to practice this. You can also run it past me, bring it into office hours, show me before or after class. Understand that when you paraphrase, you have to basically cite everything that isn't common knowledge. Think of common knowledge as what you knew about psychology about the topic before you ever took a psychology class. It's the common knowledge is if I pulled somebody at random off the street and I said, tell me about Freud's psychosexual stages. The odds are they would say, haven't the slightest. After taking psych, uh, intro psych, you can probably say, well, there are the different stages of Freud's development, and there's five of them, or anal phallic latency genital. You'd have to cite that, because that's not common knowledge. That's what you learned in class. That's what you learned from the text. So if a random person would know it, like Freud was a psychologist, that you don't have to cite. Okay? But ideas about his theories beyond what people tend to know, you have to cite. Recycling an old paper is also bad. Uh, the best thing to do if you're not sure if it's okay is to ask a professor if it's okay to do that. Don't just do it and hand it in because nowadays with things like Safe Assign and Turn It In, it's going to come up as plagiarized. You don't really want to go there. I don't think anyway. So examples of plagiarism. Like I said, turning in someone else's work. Copying words or ideas from someone else without getting, giving credit. Okay, if you get an idea from someone, you have to cite them, okay? Failing to put a quotation in quotation marks. If you take it word for word from a source, if you don't paraphrase it, it's got to be in quotation marks, and it's got to have a citation. I don't care if it's directly from the textbook. The only way that I'm going to know that is if you cite and reference it. Otherwise, you stole it. Giving incorrect information about the source of a quotation. I have students make up citations. And this is one of the things that AI really likes to do, by the way. I've caught a lot of papers by having made up citations because I look them up to make sure they're real. Changing words but copying the sentence structure. I call this the source plagiarism, which is you keep the structure of the sentence. They talk about this, then this, then this. You just change the words to synonyms. That's not paraphrasing because you're copying the structure. 
and you're copying the words. You're just changing them to synonyms, which very often, by the way, don't mean the same thing as the word you were using. And very often it turns out to be wrong. That's not paraphrasing. If you're not sure what paraphrasing is at this point, you need to go to the writing center or come and talk to me. Copying so many things from a particular source that it makes up the majority of your work. Y you can't basically take someone else's paper and, and paraphrase it and cite it and hand it in as your own because it's not yours. Okay? We want your ideas here. We want your work. So here we come to the quiz. Number one through eight, my students, and put down your answer whether or not you think this is plagiarism. The source we're going to have is Green Eggs and Ham, written by... Uh, Dr. Seuss, although, by the way, I learned very recently that his name is actually pronounced Seuss. Okay? I mean, no one outside of him and his family care, but it's actually Seuss. But uh, Theodore Geisel in 1960. We'll be using APA citation style. You're in my class. This is what you'll be using. For the following example, imagine your assignment is to write a paper about perception of unfamiliar food. If you're not familiar with green eggs and ham, it's basically this. There is this fellow on the left that is pestering the guy on the right about trying green eggs and ham, and the guy on the right really doesn't want to try green eggs and ham. I won't spoil the ending for you. But half the book is, I do not, I do not like them, Sam I am. I do not like green eggs and ham. And that's what we're focusing on right there. First one. Many people do not like green eggs and ham. Is this plagiarized? Put yes or no. Is it plagiarized? Darn tootin'. Do not like green eggs and ham was taken directly from the source. Okay? You take something directly from the source, you got to cite it. Many people, quote, do not like green eggs or ham. Is this plagiarized? Yes, it is, actually. Why? No citation. No citation. If you don't tell me where you got it from, it's still plagiarism. Okay? Because I know you got it from somewhere, but you don't tell me where, not good enough. I need to be able to look up where you got it from. Many people do not like green eggs and ham. Geisel, 1960. Plagiarized? Yep. Why? No quotation marks. <laughs> you got to have both of them. Okay? You have to have both of them. How about this one? We're moving right along here. How about this one? Many people, quote, do not like green eggs and ham, unquote. Geisel, 1960, page 12. Is this plagiarized? Nope. Bingo. Um, there is a note at the end that basically says that it would be better if you paraphrased it. And quite frankly, for a lot of things, it's better if you learn to paraphrase, if you learn to put it in your own words. One way to do this, by the way, is to pretend you're explaining it to a friend of yours and type it in and then go back and pretty it up a little. Okay? I would much rather have something be a bit oversimplified and be in your own words than to have something that is beautiful and plagiarized or something after you quote your entire paper. I have people who are so worried they quote their entire paper. You can always run things past me. And again, this is why you have those different rough drafts. But if you're at all worried, send me the source you got it from, the paragraph or whatever. Send me how what you're paraphrasing in an email. I'll take a quick look at it and be able to tell you quickly whether or not it's paraphrased. And remember, even if you paraphrase it, you still need to cite it if it's not common knowledge. Number five. Many people dislike green ham and eggs. Geisel, 1960. Is this plagiarism? Darn tootin'. Yep, I know I said that before. I'm saying it again. It's the same sentence structure. You just changed do not like to dislike and swapped ham and eggs. That's not paraphrasing. Okay? That's, that's just moving things around. And it's, so cl and it's not exactly from the original, and therefore you also can't quote it. Either actually paraphrase the whole thing or quote it. Don't do this sort of halfway stuff here. Okay, this is not paraphrased. Moving things around. The same thing with our next example. Many people have a strong distaste for forest colored fowl embryos and cured domesticated pork products. 
I gave away the answer to this one. Is this plagiarism? <laughs> yes, it is. This is thesaurus plagiarism. Sticking in fancy words that mean the same thing as the original while keeping the sentence structure the same, which is what is going on here, is not paraphrasing. Okay? <laughs> now, most of the source plagiarism is not this blatant and it's not this humorous. But remember, you can't just stick in synonyms. Sticking in synonym, synonyms is not paraphrasing, despite what you may have gotten away with in high school or in other classes. Okay? Trust me on this one. Lack of familiarity with particular preparation styles of foods is likely to lead to premature rejection based on ignorance rather than an objective appraisal of the inherent taste qualities of that food. Geisel, 1960. Is this plagiarism? No, but quite frankly, it sucks. <laughs> I know a lot of people think that in order to paraphrase, in order to write college papers, they have to sound like they swallowed a dictionary. And in some cases that may be true, but when I'm grading, I, I don't mind if you use casual language as long as it's precise casual language, okay? This is just kind of ridiculous. You know, I, I simple and clear and concise. The, those are my watch cries right there. Those are the words I live by with writing. And they should be the words that you live by, too, because it'll make things a lot easier, particularly for your professors. So to sum up, not plagiarized, but not written very clearly either. Is this plagiarism? When something is unfamiliar or foreign to us, we tend not to judge it fairly. Geisel, 1960. Is this plagiarism? No. And in fact, this is what you should be writing. What you want to do when you read those papers, I mean, you're probably going to have to talk a little bit about the, the method they used and stuff, but you want to sum up what they found. You want to sum up the, the general finding of that paper that you wrote that applies to what you're talking about. And that's what this does. That whole book is about someone judging food because they never tried it, because it looked weird, because they never had it before. And that's what this says. And this is the sort of thing that you're going to want to write because this is the sort of thing that I want you to get out of those papers. Not that you can copy and paste the right stuff and quote it properly, but that you understand what the point of, it, of that research was and that you can explain why it's important to your particular question. Okay? So again, for those of you in my class, you got those one through eight. Uh, add a couple of sentences so that... Uh, to tell me what you knew and what you didn't know. Again, no need to explain it. Please type this up so I don't have to uh, try to figure out your handwriting and then upload it in the appropriate spot in Blackboard. As always, we need, we need work cited and we have that right here. You always need to have a reference section at the end or a work cited section. So please make sure that after you've done all that work of citing and quoting and paraphrasing, that you also have references at the end. I hope this has been useful. If you have any questions at all about this, please feel free to let me know. I'll be happy to answer them. Thanks.